In this video, which is part 15 of creating a can custom candlestick chart in ChartJS, we're going to focus on a Boilinger band where we have an upper limit and a lower limit here. And then we also have the moving average here in the center. So let's start to look how we can do this as well. So let's continue on and now we have the moving average, but what would be far more, more nicer to have is as well a Boilinger band. So let's scroll down here and let's work on an indicator object and continue on with the next item. So we have here the indicator and what we're going to do now is add up a Boilinger band. And I realized what we need to do first is to have the data of the Boilinger band. So I'm going to scroll up here. We have here the moving average. And then what I can do here, just down here, we're going to say here, Boilinger band. And the Boilinger band will be like this because it's an object itself that consists of two arrays. So first one would be, let's say here, the bottom or the top. I guess we can do here bottom first. And then later on, we're going to get the top as well. So the top and bottom. So to make it easy, I'm going to grab this and just put them in here. I know it's not really correct, but that's all right. Bear with me. This is just to show you how and you can put in your real data in here. And what I'm going to do here, just for the top, which will define the upper limit, will be two, two. Everything just be converted into a number two here. There we are. And this one, I'll just make this all zero. So once we have this, we are good to go. All right, so let's save that. There we are, if I refresh. Oh, interesting, we forgot a comma probably. Yes, we did. Here, save that. And all right, interesting. There's another mistake here, 130, 130. Another comma here, of course. There we are. So this all works. And of course, this is not the data from that. This is our other data. So let's scroll down now and let's look at that. What was that console log? That was probably from the moving average array in the indicator. It's this one here. So basically what I could do is I could just cut this out and then we can change it. If I would say here, for example, this moving average, we could say here, boy, Linger band, save that, refresh, open up developer tab, and you will see here we get here bottom and top, two arrays in here, which is exactly what you want. There is just one difference with the Boilinger band compared to the moving average. The Boilinger band should be not after the data set, but before the data set. So that is very important, and because of that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, then what I'm going to do here is put a comma on the after you can see here this and this curly braces and then here enter and i'm going to say here before all right so before the data sets and then everything else is just the same i guess we can just maintain all of this data or both of these and then we can start working on it all right so now we have this here what i want to do now is well what we can do is we can probably define our uh, well, let's see our lines. So to do that, I'm going to say you first of all, ctx dot begin path. Let's make it independent of any other shape. And this shape is basically a coloring starting at the bottom, going here, going up, and then going back. So basically this shape will work slightly different and you have to make sure you understand what you're doing here because this is a bit tricky one because a shape that will color it must follow a circular motion. Meaning, because if you have a line from here to there, and you have another line from here to there, we must start with the line from here, then going up. And not from here, and then we say, all right, let's make another line starting here. If we do that, the shape inside of that shape, or basically the background color within the shape, we will not get the right color, or it will be look very weird. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna say a CTX dot, fail style, I want to have a color, and what I will do is I will say also CTX dot a stroke style for a border color. And this is slightly a different color, so what I'm going to do is I just go to my own website here on chargers3.com, getting started, started, and you can put any color you want, or you can just go to this site and just get one of these colors. 
So you can find the link as well in the description box, by the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab here maybe the orange color that is most likely this one here. This is the orange color that should be good enough for our case. So I'm going to put that in there, remove that comma, put that in here as well for the stroke. But here for the stroke will be a solid one pixel line. All right, now we have this. What I want to do next is I have to look now at drawing the line. So I'm going to say CTX up move to and then what I want to do here is I want to grab the Boilinger band item remember we had the Boilinger band here but let me cut this out put it down you can put it down here and basically what I need is use a dot and then say here for example bottom because I want to grab the bottom of the Boilinger band and specifically index 0 or any specific index that we want depending on the value so I'm going to grab this. Now in this case, I just need the index zero because that will be a starting point. So the starting point will be an index zero here somewhere, whatever the value is, there's a comma. And once I have that, I'm going to look what I need more is, well, we need to have here, that's the X value. So what's the Y value? And uh, let's see for the Y value, most likely we could just say here, Y dot get pixel for value. And then what we're going to do is put in the item here as well. So then we have this. And I realized that this should not even be, this is my mistake. Sorry, this should be the index of the item itself, not the Boilinger band item. Because here we just need the data dot data index zero. So this will be hard coded because the starting point is always at zero, zero. Right, there's a starting point. That makes sense. Then afterwards, because this is the preparation, remember this is the dot, we put the dot. And from there on, now we're going to put in a specific value. For this, what I need is to do something, uh, probably here above, but just here below. So I'm going to say here constant. And what I need is I need the length of this item here. So it's a constant. And I'm going to say here, this is the Boilinger band length. That will be this dot length, which will give us the value of eight. Then we do this minus one. So we want to have seven items here because index and array start is index zero. So that's why from zero to seven, we have the whole calculation. All right, so now we have this here. So then what I'm going to do now is, because with this, we can do now a for loop based on this, because we need to loop through all these values from one by one all to the end. You have to skip the zero because this is the starting point here. And then here we can continue on. So then I'm going to say here for loop. And then here a for loop, we're going to say let i equals one. Why one and not zero? Because the zero is the starting point of the dot. So I don't want to have that one. So then I'm going to say here we have this and then I want to loop through this and uh, we can say here we want to loop through as long as i is smaller than our boiling our band length which is number seven in this case so and then a uh, semicolon and then we say i plus plus to increment the value once we did this in here we can now start to work on drawing the line which is ctx dot and i'm going to say here line two then we're going to say here uh, we need the x and the y value and the x value here is just very simple we're going to say chart dot get data set meta and then we say here index zero because we have the data set of zero and then here data will be in array i and we say dot x so that makes all sense because that's just the starting point so once we have this one here that's the first one. Then we have the next one, which is eventually this item most likely, but then with the I value in there. Let's copy that, put that in there. And then we say here, the I. So once we have that, semicolon here, what I want to do now just to test it, I'm going to ctx.stroke to draw the shape. Save, refresh. All right, interesting, we get an error. So most likely I am missing something on 339. All right, we have this. I think we're forgetting a parenthesis here. Make sure you have another parenthesis for the line two. So 
just to make sure you can see it clearly this is the one we need to do all right so if i save that refresh there we are so now we have this and interesting enough it is like this but i feel like we're missing something um surprising me oh maybe we could even say this or that will be this or equal to save refresh there we are i'm surprised that this one is not working so what i'm going to do here is let's check we have this ctx move tool this will be the starting point and then it starts to draw so what is going on here are we missing something hold on let me check all right so after a quick check i realized that somehow this is not correct doesn't grab you the proper data and what would be even better is well there's two options you can do it you can put on zero here but it would not make really sense because it will start here and then it will duplicate that value there although it would not really matter however this is the official way if we're just going to copy this part here put it in there and force here a zero that's the one we need because then we get the data here if i refresh there we are so this works nicely now so now we have this all working what we need to do now is basically going up and then we're going to continue back this is very important we cannot do this so you might say well if we just do this would that not be then the perfect method just say here and we say here then in this case zero and we're going to just change it to j i'm going to show it to you okay, this is not the way by the way so you're just to be clear and this all j but then we say here instead of going around bottom we're going to say top if i save this what will happen is look what we get we get this line connecting here because that's what it assumes it and then if we would close the path we will get here like a zigzag motion so we don't want that so what we need to do is we are going to go do a for loop here but the for loop will be slightly different so we're going to say here, let j equals and then what we want to do here is basically the opposite i want to grab here that this will be equal to the length then we're going to say a semicolon then we say here we're going to loop through this as long as this doesn't hit zero to so the moment we are reaching zero at that moment we want to stop it and this is not what i want to do sorry i need to get this j here because the j will equal to to uh, number seven this is seven items right now and then we have this here we'll loop through this as long as it doesn't hit zero and i'm going to say j minus minus so it means that we decrement or decline or decrease the value with minus one so once we have that what we're going to do now is uh, put in again the drawing of the line let's put that in there and let's make that like this so it's a bit neat then we can copy this part here and all we want to do here is instead of that we're going to say j and we're going to put in here j as well so if i save that refresh all right interesting it doesn't work as i expected so let's see what am i missing so most likely i'm missing something here if j um let me double check this oh of course sorry about that the bottom as you can see here what is happening it goes back but it follows the same trail that's why it doesn't notice it if i do top here we should have here now an adjustment all right so now we have this how do we get here from this point back here so well luckily this is quite easy because we can go down here and then we can just say here we have the stroke before the stroke goes a ctx at close path and then it will automatically close for us so it understands what to do here so that is the first one and what i do notice here is we have these lines here as well so we have to see maybe i need to change something here because these lines need to be on top of the boiling or band so i'm going to check later on how we can solve that but we have this here and then what i want to do as well is let's do the background color ctx dot fail save and then we can say here ctx dot restore save that there we are all right so now we have that what i want to do is just solve these lines here because this should not be allowed so if we're going to scroll up here and going to look what is exactly or how did we draw our cross here so this is the 
after data sets draw and I'm surprised that the after data sets draw with the lines overrules our item oh sorry this is for the crosshair that's not what I want I need a custom scale even for this one after data sets draw it has been here and this one here overrules that so that's interesting so that's all right we're going to solve it differently so we have here the before data sets draw normally that should not even happen but let's say here before I guess or after tooltip I guess we can just check uh, let me check quickly all right so this is quite interesting I didn't realize this and I just learned something new is we have these lines here and apparently the order of the array for the plugin loading has impact so we have this indicator and I thought that this should then automatically always be before but what happened is apparently certain things overruled so what we want to do is this indicator we want to load that before we load these lines here to avoid that you have an overlap uh, or an unex or undesirable overlap so I'm going to scroll down here and we don't have to do anything complicated except saying indicator should start before we load the candlestick if I save that refresh there we are beautiful so now we have this and you might say well hold on look at this this is absolutely horrible I totally agree on this so there's just only one flaw in this going here it's quite tricky although we have an easy, easy way to do it but it is not a very desirable way but I'm going to give you the option so you can see that so we have this here in the scales and then what I want to do here is on the X scale because let me explain why this happened in a bar chart by default there's always like an offset here and we can remove the offset in a line chart we don't have the offset so that's why in a line chart it will start just nicely at this at the at the uh, left side of the chart area and ends at the right side but in a bar chart they give some extra space because the bar has a bar thickness so in here what we can do is to say offset we set this on false save refresh what happens it pushes it now to the left and right side the only downside is it clips off a certain part of your bar or of your candlestick so if this is desirable, I'm not sure. Although this can be acceptable if you have a huge amount of data, then it would probably not matter so much anymore because of the beginning and the end. But of course, that's all up to you. You can choose on this. So this is a way to create a boiling up band. And then in the next video, what I want to do, because I saw that on the Yahoo Finance chart, is where you can show one, the moving average, and show the boiling band or hide them so you can select which one to show. The next video we're going to focus on that.